Hi guys, good evening. How are you? How is your preparation going? The biggest exam of the season is just around the corner and I'm, I'm, I'm sure all of you are very excited about it, looking forward to cracking it, raring to go. Guys, the objective of my appearing before you here today is that I want to do something in quantitative aptitude. Uh, many of you wanted us to do something and wanted us to do something specifically in arithmetic this time. So I thought that I'll solve a few questions for you. The problem with arithmetic, especially in prelims is that since you have very little time, you think that we waste a lot of time reading the questions and cracking them, thinking about the approach and all those things. Yes, I understand. So it's a little tougher as compared to questions on series or quadratic or simplification approximation. That's okay. But if you look at the paper out of 35 questions, 10 questions would be series, uh, quadratic and simplification approximation and the rest 25 would be arithmetic or DI. It generally is like that. So yes, I understand if you prefer data interpretation over arithmetic, but my advice for you here would be to be flexible. So treat the paper on its merit. Do not take any preconceived notions to the examination hall saying that I'll not do arithmetic, I'll do DI. Do whatever you want to do, but do according to what is there in front of you, right? So if you're somebody who is good at arithmetic, but still tends to leave arithmetic in prelims, it's not a very good thing to do. Analyze the paper once and then you'll realize probably that there are few questions at least that you could have done in the paper. So what I've done here for you today is that I have taken 10 questions from Olive Board's free mock test for SBI PO prelims. I've taken actual questions because had I created questions on my own, you would have said, sir, aapke jadu, aapke apne questions mein to lagi jayenge. So that is the reason that I want to take some actual questions. So these are actual questions taken in that same order. Uh, there are 10 questions in that test. I've taken them in the same order. We'll solve all of them for you. Koi jadu nahi hai, koi magic nahi hai. It's all those things that you know, but I'll try and still explain them in detail and realize how quickly we can do all of them. So what does it boil down to? Just having a cool head and reading the questions carefully and attempting them, applying yourself well. So uh, if you want to learn something from this session, it's a very short session. Please be with me, listen to each word carefully and do as I say. So the next step would be that you have to pause this video after I show you the 10 questions. So I'll show you all 10 questions one by one. All 10 questions, pause there, attempt everything. Even if you've solved the test before, please do all 10 questions this time now. Thinking of it as a small section of the prelims test for quantitative aptitude. Take whatever time it takes, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, whatever, and then look at my solutions. And then we'll, after discussing the solutions, I will again uh, come back and will share uh, some gyan with you. Right, so I'm showing the questions now. Please be with me. Please pause the video at all the questions, attempt them, and then listen to what I've got to tell you here. Right, so let's get started. Guys, this is question number one. This is two. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and this is the last question, question number 10. Right, I have shown you the questions now. Guys, please don't cheat. If you want to learn something from the session, be honest, be sincere. Attempt these 10 questions and then restart the video after some time. Fine. Look at the solutions and then listen to me. Right, so let's get started. Question number 1, what's given here? Breadth and length of the rectangle and the ratio 3 is to 4. So if breadth is 3, length would be equal to 4. What would be the parameter of this rectangle? 3 plus 4, 7 into 2, that's 14. And it says parameter of rectangle is half of the parameter of square. So what would be the parameter of square? There will be 14 into 2, that's 28. And the side of the square would then be 28 by 4, that is 7. It's given here, radius of circle is twice of the side of the square. So radius of circle would then be 14, 7 into 2. What is it asking us to calculate? The ratio of area of circle and area of rectangle. So area of circle would be pi 22 by 7 into r square. This is 14. 14 into 14. Right. Upon area of rectangle. So area of rectangle is width into length 3 into 4. This is it. This is twice. This becomes 2. This is 7. So 22 into 7. That's 154. This is 154 by 3. Answer becomes option D. Let's move to the next one. Question number 2. What is the first step? Reduce the values. This is 280 liters. This is 40 liters. So for us, this is 7 units and this is 1 unit. So if the total quantity initially is 7 units of A and B, we can write it like that. This is 7 minus B and B initially. What happens? 1 unit of B is added. So it becomes 
B plus 1. So this is the exact scenario. Now what happens here? The ratio of liquid A and B reverses. So 7 minus B upon B, that's the initial ratio. This reverses after B changes from B to B plus 1. It becomes B plus 1 upon 7 minus B. Just that. 7 minus B whole square is 49 plus B square minus 14B. That's equal to B square plus B. This gives us B as 49 by 15, right? But is that the answer? No, we reduce by 40. So multiply that 40 back. So answer would be 49 by 15 into 40. What is this? This is 3. This is 8. This is how much? 392 by 3, which gives us 130 whole 2 by 3. That's your answer. Question number 3. What's given here? 185 contestants won prizes fine, after reaching the final round. It says 63% of the people participating in the final round did not win. How many win? 37%. So can we say that people reaching final round are 185 into 100 by 37? That's the first step. And it also says 60% of the contestants could not make it to the final round. So how many made it to the final round? 40%. 40% is 2 by 5. So what would we write here? 5 by 2. Simple. This is 5. This is how much? 2500 by 2, which is 1, 2, 5, 0, which is option D. Comes your answer. Question number 4. Now in this one, just compare these two scenarios. 4 years ago, the ratio of the ages of her son and husband was 3 to 8. So the age of son was 3 units, right? This 3 units. Present age is Kirti and her son, 9 is to 4, right? So son's age, 4 units. Here 3 units, here 4 units. So it increases by 1 unit, 1 unit in 4 years. So husband's age, this is 8. How much would it be now? 9 units. What is Kirti's age? 9 units, 9 units, 9 units. It's equal. Combined age presently 72 years. So what is the answer? 72 by 2, which is 36 years becomes your answer. Question number 5. A and B enter into a partnership by investing this much and this much. 3750, 4800, right? And his third guy, C, joins them after 3 months. So he was invested only for 9 months. So first convert this number equivalent to 12 months. So what would we do? 4500 into 9 by 12 or 4500 into 3 by 4 into 3 by 4. So how much would this be? 3375. So this is effectively the ratio. Add this and this because we are calculating the share of B not make a difference. So 4800 is B and A plus C would be 7125 right now reduce it divide by 25. So how much would this be? 192 is to 285. We can further divide and divide by 3, it becomes 64 is to 95, right? So this is the ratio. What is this? This is B's share and this is A plus G's share. Add the 2, how much is that? 159, so what is the answer? 64 upon 159 into, this is the total profit, 4452. Divide it, how much would this be? This is twice and this becomes how much? 8, 64 into 28, how much would this be? This would be 2. 917. So, option C 1792. Had some calculation, but yes, could have been done quickly. You just need to know how to convert this part. We have done many questions like that earlier. Question number 6. What would you do here? Either you have to make equations or check with options. Profit percentage is 33 whole, 13 by 14. It looks scary, but this is a very good value. 14 in the denominator means there's a good chance that CP would be a multiple of 14. Just check here. Let's check CP 280. Markup is 220, so mark price would be 500. Discount of 20% means selling price would be 375. Cost price we are saying is 280, so what would be the profit? 375 minus 280, that is 95. So 95 upon 280 into 100%. How much is this? This cancels. This is 2 into 5, this is 2 into 14. 95 into 5 is 475 upon 14. Looks like the answer. Watch this. This is 33 whole 13 by 14 percent which is uh, the same value so option d becomes our answer you could have marked it directly but yes this much is fine question number seven now if you look at the options is an absolute sitter 28 percent males are illiterate so literate males 72 percent females 5 upon 7 so what is 5 upon 7 1 minus 2 upon 7 2 upon 7 is 28.5 percent so how much is this this is approximately 71.5 percent this is 72 percent this is 71.5 percent the answer has to be between them only possibility is option C becomes your answer. Question number 8. Now again either you have to make a small equation or use options. 
what's given here simple interest of 1404 years so one year the interest would be rupees 1200 fine if you have to pick one option which one would you pick to check the easiest one 10 percent so if 1200 is one year's interest what would be the interest for next year in case of compound interest so 1200 plus 120 right so this is second year's interest and 1200 is first year's interest then what is the principal into 10 so that's 12,000 add all three 12,000 plus 1200 plus 1200 plus 120 first year's interest second year's interest how much would this be this one answer becomes option b that is 10 percent it satisfies question number nine another sitter what does it say when it goes exclamatory substream 105 minutes exclamatory upstream 84 minutes so 105 upon 84 ratio of time taken that is 5 upon 4 so that is the ratio of the speeds as well speed in still water is 45 that's the average of the two speeds 50 and 40 so that's downstream speed that is upstream speed so what is the speed of the current 50 minus 45 that is 5 kilometers per hour that is your answer question number 10 now what is given here xyz they do together in 8 hours z alone do in 28 hours lcm 56 so let's take the work as 56 units x plus y plus z do in 8 hours so what is their efficiency x plus y plus z will be equal to 56 by 8 that is 7 z alone does in 28 hours z efficiency would be 56 by 28 that is 2 so what is the efficiency of x plus y 7 minus 2 that is equal to 5 and it says time taken is 1 is to 4 the ratio for x and y so efficiency would be 4 is to 1 so x efficiency would be 4 so what is my answer 56 divided by 4 56 divided by 4 answer becomes option b that is 14 hours now they looked pretty manageable didn't they trust me guys many of the students after this test said that the arithmetic in this one was tough yes it was not very easy but it was manageable wasn't it manageable but you had to apply yourself a little you cannot go with stereotypes you just have to keep your mind open, apply all what you have learned and then it all becomes simple. So use options wherever it's required. So generally when I teach, I do not give you options and all. So the focus is on learning the basics. But here I used options in so many of the questions. So all these things do work, but you have to look at the questions carefully. If you ask me uh, a few of these questions, since I explained everything, I think I could explain everything in 7-8 minutes to you. When I was explaining everything, I had to write a few things down, which you would not do when just solving the questions, isn't it? So it, there's a difference. So these questions, if you're good at arithmetic, could have been done in five, seven minutes, all of them easily. If you're not good, now you'll, you'll come to those students who will say, we're not good. So what about us? You still could have done six, seven of these questions within five minutes easily. Look back at it, dubara se dekho usko, and then ask yourself, could I not have done these questions? There were so many questions, the last two questions, for example, everybody knows those questions. Now, there's a lot of learning in it, in this process. For example, these were 10 questions and I picked them in the same order in which they appeared in the test. Did you realize that the first two questions were not that simple or they required some work, some paperwork, whereas the last five questions were very simple. So this happens at times. You look at the first one, the first two, first one had involved mensuration, so it was simple. The second one required some calculation. There was an equation that I reduced, but yes, required some work still. So you look at that and say, arithmetic mushkil hai. Isn't it? It happens and starts playing on us. Because you've got just 20 minutes, you'll feel mushkil hai. Hoje, nahi kar paenge. So what do you have to do? You have to, I keep saying this in reasoning and English and everywhere, that in, in a test like this, since you cannot get stuck at anything, you have to read everything and then decide what exactly would I attempt? So if you read a question, you realize uh, I'll not be able to do this in 30, 40 seconds, 50 seconds. Leave that. Move ahead. You'll still keep finding questions. But look at these 10. I solved everything for you. Look at these 10 and ask yourself how many of these questions could I have done? Right. And then compare it with how many you actually did. Compare the approach. If there was something that you learned from this, wonderful. Uh, keep it as a takeaway. But if, if there was you know stuff that you think you knew but you could not apply, it might be a temperament issue. So it might not be at this stage so much about acquiring subject knowledge but about converting that knowledge into marks. That's also very important. So do whatever you can do to fix these small things and these things do boost your score. It happens. You arithmetic Small things, yes. But you will realize, oh yes, I am not so bad at it. I could have handled it. I knew this thing. You know, I knew it. So these are the things that you have to take care of at the time of the exam. 
so guys that was the agenda of the session i hope you liked it 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 had some value for you it made you realize that this is not a section that you you know can uh, completely ignore at the time of exam and focus completely on quadratic and simplification and approximation and uh, you know series and all th those are very important i told you probably the first thing to do in the paper but after that boils into arithmetic di what if di turns out to be calculative ho jata hai na so you'll have to fall back to arithmetic then so remain confident that's the key and believe in all what you've learned apna sikha hai na so when you've learned all this tell yourself if required i'll do all ten arithmetic questions i'll look at the paper I'll probably decide i'll do 5 7 so in this if you look back at it you'll realize no 6 7 questions are easily doable they were like 20 seconds questions 15 20 second questions no so many questions like that population percentage the time work question last wala question all of them they were like setters you look at it you mark the answer straight away you look at it you mark the answer straight away downstream upstream questions i wrote something for you it took some time you look back at it and realize there were at least 5 6 questions in this for which you would not need to touch pen find them out do them Right, that that's the key to scoring well in any subject. But prelims are special because you have very little time, and all your subject knowledge and everything goes for a toss when you've got very little time. But no, you have to hold your nerve, look at it carefully, and then attempt it. You will find stuff to do. Right, guys. So I'll take your leave. That was the agenda of the session. I hope uh, you liked it. You you know it had some value for you, and you will not you know uh, start neglecting arithmetic for prelims. Nahi karna mere ko. Nahi, galat hai. If you know it, you have to do it. You should do it. Some part of it. So it should not be like I'll do all five in number series and uh, nothing in arithmetic. No. So number series. Let's say there are five questions. So out of those five, you get four immediately. One minute. So you should not wa waste that one minute doing that fifth question. No. Pick whatever looks doable from the paper. So it can be something like uh, three, four in simplification, four in quadratic, or whatever. when all those easier topics you do 8 9 very quickly without wasting time and then uh, 10 in di and 10 in arithmetic you make a total of 30 whatever combination works for you but keep yourself open especially if you know arithmetic if you have uh, learned arithmetic if you are comfortable with arithmetic and make the most of it do not go there with preconceived notions that's the bottom line keep working guys remain confident that's the key and take mock tests it's important analyze your mistakes do not take them like taking multiple time in subah sham subah sham aise mat do you can take that subah sham that's okay analyze the test learn from your mistakes improve in the next test and then come back stronger do it like that learn from every test keep working learning from your mistakes and keep improving your scores all the best